So hey guys, this is Vishwit and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this video, I am going to talk about the library management system and I will use all of the complete data that I have and we will take a look on the fine part and if time permits, I'll show you the code, code part or else I'll uh, create a dedicated video on the code part. So first, uh, I have turned on my uh, system. So let's get into library management system. Okay. I have turned on my computer system and inside that we are in this library management system. And if I open, I'll open in terminal. We have to activate the environment. Okay. Since I'm walking inside virtual machine, so it's gonna be a little bit slow. Yeah. So I have to check what was the name of our environment Conda env list. Okay, so it's showing up by the way, I have made a complete playlist on how to use Conda and how to use the environment. If you have not checked that playlist, I do encourage you to go and check that playlist. So yeah, we have the library management system over here. Now I will activate it. Conda activate control V library management system. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to first, I will copy the data that I have. So in the previous video, I have, sh I have shown you like, if you don't have any data, how the management system will work. Okay. But I was not able to show the fine part properly. And here I will show you the fine part. So if I go to data backup, okay, he, he, uh, it contains the data that I have generated. Okay. So I'll copy this and I'll come to this data that we, that I demonstrated while uh, I was showing in the videos. Okay. So I'll delete all of this and I will paste it over here. So that's the reason I have kept the backup folder over here so that you can use the data that I have, I, I have used while developing this library management system. Okay. So now we have the data. I'll start with the module. I mean, Python, we have to go inside the scripts folder, CD scripts. Okay. Now I'll keep this over here and I will keep this over here. So, so that you don't have to look down Python main.py. Now we have the student login data. We have the JSON, like we have the library login data. Okay. So first I will show you the student login data. Okay. Uh, hopefully I remember the student ID and the name st0001 and the password is rk yeah i remember it so this is the particular student id this is the name this is the batch okay ranjit kaur it's it's like it came in my mind so i just put it over there uh, and for example if this guy wants to view book obviously he can do it okay if i press enter it is showing us more books okay and if this guy wants to borrow book, definitely he can borrow book. For example, if I am trying to borrow the book number two, this, this one number of copies is zero. I'm not supposed, I am, I should not be able to borrow this book. If I give two and press enter book, I, book is not available. Okay. So if I want to return a book, if I give three and enter, Okay, so these are the books that are borrowed by this particular person and you can see that there are uh, many duplicate books that he has borrowed. For example, he has borrowed book nine, uh, like book, book uh, ID nine multiple times. Okay, multiple times. This is like I uh, used it. So for example, if he wants to return this particular book, maybe book number 15 for us if i give 15 okay transaction successful and see this is the particular book that was returned and this was the borrow date 
this was the return date this is the holding period 26 days okay so borrow date was 11 12 2022 okay previous year december and uh, this is to the return date that is 6 1 2023 okay the next year holding period was 26 days and fine is rupees 60 okay so it generated a fine now if i uh, so this is the return part now if i go to compute fines so if i go to compute fines this will list out all the fines that this particular person has that is ranjit kaur if i do four and press enter so you can see this is the total fine that he is having okay and it is showing all the books that he has borrowed and all the fines of each book so if i go up and up so borrowed books with fines so he has borrowed book number nine and the fine is 400 rupees and the holding period is 100 140 days okay yeah, so it's rupees since i stay in india i have used rupees if you are watching from outside just think it as your currency okay but 400 dollars is like a huge okay <laughs> so just arrange it like that uh, so fine is rupees 400 over here and book id fine is 300 even 300 rupees is very high amount for a book but see the holding period is 109 days okay so based upon that the fine will calculate it and see total fine okay so we have 400 we have 300 we have 300 so total fine is like uh it's in thousand yeah 2720 rupees okay so this is total fine that got that is computed now if i want to deregister if i press 5 and deregister obviously i can't do that it will say please return the borrowed books and clear all your fines so as i said previously you have to return the books else you have to like you have to return the books and you have to clear all your fines you have to do both of this okay you can't like your fine can be zero if you have taken a book today and you are you are if you are you are trying to register so that means what your fine is zero but you have a book with you so obviously you have to return that book also so your fine has to be zero and you have to return all the books that you have taken then then only you can deregister okay so i will uh, show the data over here so if i come to data now if i come to all borrows uh hopefully i can open this with some different editor not visual studio code okay maybe with notepad for for the timing now if i open this so these are all the transaction details right i have shown this this is his transaction id this is the student id okay and this is the book id and this is the uh, date okay uh, this is the borrow date actually so if i close this this is all transactions that happened right this is like a log file you can say okay it it logs all the transactions that happened okay and this ranjit core and other user users i am going to show you so if you come to students or csv these are the three students that are present right ranjit core okay this is the id this is the name this is the password and this is the branch okay so three people i have registered and i have uh, used these three people to make this uh, transactions the borrow part the return part so this is done and i am not going to make this video longer and in the next video i will uh, talk about the code part okay i'll explain uh, the different different modules that are present okay hopefully you will be able to understand it i'll i'm going to give a oh, high level explanation on what what are these functions and what what they are doing by the way my code contains everything in detail like uh, i have done documentation also so so you should not face much of an issue i have written what all functions do so if it opens a little bit faster so here this is the book.python file okay so this is like explain extremely self-explanatory what this is doing book id book name book author publisher so i'll i'll show these things in the next video okay even i even i have to change the font size and all 
but that's it for this video i'm going to see you in an upcoming awesome video